Welcome back. In this session, we are going to look at simple column level transformations. In projects, usually you may have to transform the data from time to time. The transformations may range from, say, formatting a date field to formatting a string, or even combining two different string fields. For example, a first name and a second name to create a full name. And also at times you may have slightly more complicated transformations, which may include deriving something from two different columns. In this session, we are going to look at one of those. So let's say we have a requirement to get the number of trips made by duration in hours. So for each of the hours, we want to get the number of trips, for example, between zero and one hour duration. We got these many trips and this many trips lasted between one and two hours and you go up to the 24 hours. So in order to do that, we can use the trip data as we did with the other session. And then the trip data. As you can see here, we got the results. And from this result, we will choose the first one pickup time and the other one is drop off time. So if we did a difference between the two, then we will be able to get the duration. T-SQL gives us a function called date diff, which gives us the difference between to date fields. That's exactly what we want. So let's look at applying that. First, I'm going to show you how the date diff function works, and then we'll do the aggregations. So in order to find out how the date diff function works, we can go to the functions here, and we can look for the date diff function. So let me search for that. And as you can see, the date diff takes three parameters. The date part, start date and end date, we got the start date and end date. Let's look at what date part means so the date part can be one of these values. So it can be years, quarter, months, days, or weeks. So for example, if you say I want the difference between the two dates and minutes, it will give you the difference in minutes. So let's go ahead and implement that. So let me run this statement now, and that should give us the two dates and the differences. And now you can see this one started at 1552 and that at 1554. So the trip only lasted two minutes, which is really short. And we got all of that information here. Our requirement is to get the duration in hours, but in order to get the hours, we can divide that by 60, as you can imagine. And if I divide that by 60, you're going to get all of these as zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to alias this as from hour and we are going to again copy that and then divide by 60 and add one. So and call that as to hour. And let me explain that in a minute. As you can see here, this trip was made within two minutes, which is under one hour services between one and zero hours. And similarly, all the other trips here have been made within under an hour. But there might be more. I think there is one here which, as you can see, started at 0038 and that at 2325, which is roughly about 20 to 23 hours. So that was between 22 and 23. So that cut seemed to work. But now let's turn this into an aggregation so that we can find the number of trips for these durations. So I'm going to remove all of these things and I'm going to just do a count here. And also we need to do a group buy on the to date diff field, so let's do that. And I'm going to do an order by on those two fields so that the data looks a bit more readable. So I'm going to do order by from hour and two hour and let me run. run this through and hopefully it works. And as you can see here, we've got the trips which are made within an hour or nearly 440,000. So it is a vast majority of the trips finished within one hour, which is as expected. And between 1 and 2, you've got 5501. And then it goes down, and we've got a couple of trips going up to 24 hours. So the data gives what we want. And as you could see, they've done it for the first month, which is the January 2020. But if you want to extend it, you can quite easily extend it by doing a double star here, for example. And let me quickly run this through, and it'll take a while to run through, but it'll give you that data for the whole period. So that's done it for the entire duration. So as you can see, we got to records with the data quality issues. The way you can discard these is to check that your pickup date time is not after the drop off date time. That's what has happened. So in these cases, the drop off date time is before the pickup. 
It is impossible. That's why we got negative values here. But you can very easily just discard those two records and then use the rest for your processing and everything else looks reasonably okay here. And that's the end of this session. I'll see you in the next one.